Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this. Uh, it's not a stream. To this game of Total War Three Kingdoms, where we are playing as Liu Bao. We are about to fight a battle here, but before we get on with this, I just want to say, because I totally forgot to do it at the beginning of the last episode, which is bloody annoying, I will be streaming on Twitch this evening at 5 pm. British Summertime. If you want to see the continuation of the series beyond episode 3 live, you will be able to do that there. So remember, twitch.tv slash Mordred Viking, come join us. Right, let's have a battle. And we'll see how this differs from the other Total Wars. Now watch me as I get like all of the controls completely screwed up. It's gonna happen. <laughs> it's definitely gonna happen. I hope it doesn't happen. <clears throat> and I also need to move my face. I'll do that when I've actually seen the screen, and then we can, like, make some decisions about where it should be. Because right now it's not obscuring anything. And it's still not obscuring anything. Maybe I'll leave it here for now. At least while we have smaller armies, we can always shift it somewhere later when I'm a little bit more comfortable with what is going on in the UI. Deployment phase. Okay, so we can see our opponents over here in the distance. They have got two units of yellow turban warriors. Uh, how do you compare to my say my saber guys? Less morale. Similar toughness. Exactly the same range toughness. And less melee power. So my units are better than yours in every single way. Good to know. However, they are spearmen. Are they spearmen? Sword infantry, so no. I can ch charge them with cavalry if I so wish. So, as I was saying before, we do have our army split into the three sections. You can select your characters and you can move them around. And they got their nice smiley portraits and you can zoom in and have a look. Hello, characters. I don't know... If their positioning matters in terms of where their retinues are, I suspect it probably does. Um, but I think we are going to set our army up in just a regular fightiness formation. We do have a bit of a hill over here on the right, which I think I would like to make use of. So if we grab our archers and position them here. Wow, archers have a bloody huge range. I remember seeing that in uh, various streams and things I've seen. Can I move these guys around just to make them easier to control? No. So we're going to get our swordsmen to be our center. We'll put them there. And then we'll have the axemen on one flank. Axemen on the other flank. Because then they can loop around and charge if they need to. And if they get charged into, then they're less likely to cause me problems with my archers. And then I'm going to put both of my cavalry here in the back line. Ready for action. We'll bring in Lukui with them. Are you please mounted? You are mounted. I think heroes are always mounted. Uh, Lu Bao is going to be at the back here with those guys. And then Huang Zong is going to be kind of here with them. Uh, can I turn you? Yes. Controls are exactly the same as Warhammer, which makes me really happy. Because I'd rather know those. Okay, let us begin. Now, are you going to try and attack me or are you going to hang around up there? That's the question. Have a look how the uh, unit models look. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice bit of differentiation between the different characters, which I like. But it doesn't look like they're going to come to me, so I think I'm just going to have to select my entire force and just go, I want you over here, where hopefully we can provoke you. So, selecting all of my units, holding down Alt, and that means I can move the entire formation. If I then keep Alt held down and uh, press Control, hold Control as well, that's how I was rotating the whole group. Uh, we have... Whoa! This... Okay. I want to see my controls. No, I want my battle interface. I do not want a default to run because that just knackers your entire army. I don't want skirmish 
to be turned on automatically. Drag outlines. If enabled, will render unit drag out as outlines. If disabled, will render as markers per entity as in previous Total War. I think I prefer that one. Unit category sorting. If enabled, your unit cards in battle will be ordered according to the unit categories rather than by their retinue. Uh, I'll leave that as is for now. And then alternative unit cards. Oh, are these the more realistic ones? Those are the more realistic. Oh, so much prefer this. Thank you for giving me the option. Like, one of the first things I installed in Total War Rome 2 was the unit cards, so they weren't so stylized. And one of my things I really didn't like about Thrones of Britannia was how stylized they were. I just prefer these realistic icons. I really do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good. Good option. Right, and you lot are all running right now, so you're going to get exhausted when you're going over there. Let's not run. Let's walk. I just tried to pour myself some tea without remembering I've, in fact, just got my one cup of tea. Now, where's the speed? Here's the speed. That's the bar. I'm so used to speeds and things being up there. That's going to take a little bit of getting used to. How do our brave troops look? These are the Axemen. Coming over here, we've got our Sabres. Never has there been a better sword ever invented. And be forgotten. Your words are as pathetic as you are. Oh, yeah, you got the banter between generals. I like that too. Alright, so how far can the archers shoot? Not far enough, evidently. A so, duel is single combat between two generals. Troops will honor the duel and not interfere unless ordered otherwise. Similar. No. I'm allowed to say no. I need to remember which classes do what. Sorry, I just need to pause here a second. Vanguards are good at breaking through enemy units. Ah, uh, see, I have no champions. A sentinel would be able to hold up their general. But wouldn't necessarily beat him. And Lu Bao definitely doesn't want to fight him. What's their general? Their general is a veteran. Veterans are what? Good at holding out against many enemies. So could I? Oh, I have different abilities here. You could do the duel against him. Ah! It agreed. A general must use all their talents to win a duel, as the results can sway the battle in favor of the victor. The two generals are fighting. We missed the cavalry charge. Sorry about that. So this is Lao Hua versus Dong Zhu. No, against uh, Huang Zong. Ready. And this is a fight that's going to go on for a while. They're both basically sentinels. Bowman. Meanwhile, Bowman. Oh, go ahead and open fire. Are they using shields? They are. You seem to be struggling. Need some help? Oh, how witty! How oh, very witty! Axman! Keeping! Now! Attend! Move out! March now! Alright, do I have any abilities you can use? Skirmish mode, reject, warning shot. No. You have Flames of the Phoenix. It does a bunch of splash damage. Can I tell these to just use automatically? It doesn't look like it. And then you can increase your ranged block chance. The Stone Bulwark. Oh, we got charged. Where you out? If only wars were won with witty words. Onward! Our 
archers, prepare! And they're ready! Axe warriors! Get moving! Yes, I did just try to do a uh, ultimate general there. It didn't work! So I've purposely used my sentinel here to lock their general down, so their general's not, like, boosting their general, uh, their units. Which means I can get these rear charges and things going on. And also it just means they're not getting any general bonuses from their general being present. So who is winning this fight? But hopefully he just decides to run away because his entire army is in routing. Attention! Attention! I think we can basically tell you two to stop. March now! Do they have anything left? Let's get our saber unit and pull you back. And then also the axemen pull back. Then that's going to just leave the cavalry to hunt down any forces that they may have in this area. Although I think we've killed it all. Knocked and ready. Make ready. At the ready. General leave the battlefield. But his retinue suffers because of it. Oh, they do still have some men there. Cavalry! Go! I'm amazed that their general is still here. Steal yourselves! There is uh, no victory in death. Our generals should fall back. Yeah, I would agree with that. that That seems inadvisable, so I will decline. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, he's running away. I can't duel him again. So apparently, I, yeah, okay. I was hoping that I would be able to basically outlast him because his entire army ran away, but apparently that wasn't the case. So I need to be a little bit more careful about using sentinels in a fight like that. Noted. Can you see how tough he is? No, not easily. The men are out of ammunition. How many hit points do you have? I'm just going to say we're done here. End battle. Decisive victory. So we can see how many kills each unit got. How many are left? So we only lost one unit of cavalry. Cavalry commander got 14 kills. The axemen didn't do a huge amount. In fact, this whole retinue is a little bit underperforming. The archers did good. All Victory is yours. Off. And the fate of those you have captured in battle must be decided. You may bolster your ranks with the remaining enemy soldiers, or kill them, to prevent them returning to fight you again. Okay, so we can ransom them for some extra money, we can seize their supplies for the supplies, and we can get 4% replenishment. I think I'm going to ransom I am them. Not without mercy. I want the money. Liu Bao faces war and does not shirk away. We've got our taste of victory from that. No matter how devoted your soldiers are, Rest is needed between marches. Try to manage your army's movements so they can rest in safe locations. Okay, so we need to make it up to Zhang Zhang in order to take the toolmaker. 
And then we would have our entire province, I think. Or is this the only thing that's missing from this province? Yeah, I think that's how it works. Can I see how far I can move? Uh, I can't move. No, I can move. That's a little confusing. With honor. And yeah, you are nearly dead, so we definitely need you recovering some health before this fight. Cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, in town, we can upgrade this empty slot with one of these buildings. Or we can upgrade the patrols to a guard post. Which will cost us more upkeep. <laughs> I'm not even streaming, I'm just getting a uh, follow notification, sorry about that. Plus four public order, plus ten military supplies. And government building construction cost is reduced. We cannot afford to convert this to a food trader, we've currently got farming estates. Requires more technology. And same with the Rural Administration. Lodging is our unique building. It would cost us 2,000. We do have 3,400 if we wanted to spend that. Income from commerce produces commerce income and also uh, decreases the cost of farming production. State workshops increases industry income. Learning and market buildings, construction cost reduction. Private workshops increases income from commerce, increases a tiny bit of from industry. Government support, drifter farming camp, increases food production and income from peasantry. Land development we cannot do, it's locked, I suspect, behind a technology. Grain storage increases public order, increases our reserve capacity. Schools. Costs us income, uh, upkeep. Increases character experience faction-wide. And decreases agriculture building cost. Marketplace increases quite dramatically income from commerce. Uh, conscription office reduces population growth. But increases the starting rank of all recruits. Blacksmith decreases recruitment cost, increases income from industry. Military infrastructure increases public order and supplies, and also provides a garrison. Administrative office increases prestige, income from all sources. Confucian temples increases public order. Then the tax collector decreases public order, but increases income from peasantry. So I'm kind of leaning towards either a country school or a um, lodging. Lodging does seem to increase our income quite dramatically, but this is our capital. I think I'm going to go for a school. Those who oppose harmony must be crushed. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll also take a quick look at True the tech tree. True ambition is not to match the great deeds of the past, but to build upon them. Reforms create fresh practices, military tactics, philosophies, laws, and tools. So this is something that we'll just need to kind of learn in time. We have got... I do like how this is a literal tree, by the way. It's a tech tree! Um, so we've got private tutors at the moment. Which unlocks something. Increases character experience. Branch will lead to better and faster growing generals. Uh, decreases character salary and unlocks that building. Can I click on this and you'll stay... Okay, so that allows us to get archers, is what the private tutors do. We can get the foreign envoys, which increases the number of trade agreements. We can get the masterful disguise techniques. Increases cover cost for enemy spies. Character salary, and also the academy complex. Which dramatically increases our faction-wide character increase. Character experience increase. Market administration increases commerce income. Merchant warehouses, salt, jade, and docks. And what's that? Lubo. Unlocks the repeating crossbow. Oh, that's our faction ability. 
No, that's true in a year. And also trade influence. Well, I think I want the... Annual proficiency reports. Under philosophy and trade. That's going to take three turns. And what's that? Well, that's population. That's whether it's got positive food. That's public order going down. And then income. Alright, I think we are ready to end turn. Yeah. So Hei Yi is fighting against some people down there. That's more yellow turbans, I believe. Nice quick Your end of turn. The population has grown so large that harvesting food is now a priority. Expand your territories to secure more farmland or build and develop more farms. Brick by brick, our cities continue to rise. The splendor of the Han and the old ways have shine across the land and remind the people of the strength of our institutions. Liu Bao gets a bunch of experience. Cool. So let's Fear go and take this no. toolmaker. Your armies are composed of generals and their retinues. A retinue is made up of up to six units. And once a general is recruited, these loyal followers will follow them into battle in service of your cause. Although basic units are available to all generals, the type of advanced units can be recruited will depend on the general's type and the skills they've unlocked. And... Oh, here are the different stances. Marching stance, ambushing stance, and camp stance. We're currently in normal. What do you wish to know? Character details. Move retinues. Whew, excuse me. And we have to be in our own territory to recruit. So, if we attack this, can we see... Any details about their garrison? Yes. So it's currently held by a yellow turban archer captain. Peasant archers, peasant archers, yellow turban horsemen, then peasant spearmen. So we should just out quality them. Strike true. No two battles are the same. Remain flexible and consider which tactics and units are best suited to each battle. Now, I don't know how fortified stuff is going to be in this. So we can just surrender them and starve them out. We can break the siege. We can see the map. Oh, here we go. We can see the map. Uh, so it is a siege. Whether this actually has walls. It does look like they have towers. But we'll do this. We'll be able to rest our armies after this. This is like their last stronghold we have worked hard near us. To reach this point. We must crush these insects. Your prattle brings disharmony. Cease and fight. I like these uh, dialogues between your own commanders. That's kind of cool. And like how they merge together and yeah, just the way the artwork's done. It's nice. I wasn't sure if I was going to be sold on the. Uh, Water paint type style. It's good. Continue. Okay, so they have got gateways, which I'm going to guess will shoot at us. There's a capture point over here. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to have to force our way through one of the gateways, which will, of course, cause us to take damage. It does look like the easiest way through would be here. So if we launch a major attack on the top side and then try to sneak through our cavalry in the bottom, I think that's what I like the idea behind. So let's get you lot lined up over here. Uh, we could even hide you in the woods so they don't know exactly what it is we're trying to do. Then we'll get a swordsman deploying here. With archers' support. 
And then we'll have the Axemen on the flanks again. Vanguard can sit back here along with you. If they call me out on a duel, I'll just say no. In fact, I'm just going to go automatically reject any proposed duels on you. Don't want to fight them. Uh-uh. No way. No how. Alright, let's do this. Can I see what your range is? I can. It's like right there. Oh, all of you. Advance! In fact, I'm a little bit concerned about you getting shot, because you really are on very low health. And this patch of woodland seems like it's very nicely suited to what I want you to do. Um, let's have all of you run. So we take as few uh, arrows from the towers as we possibly can get away with. Now the archers are getting into range. We will begin to fire at the peasant spearmen. In fact, you can stay here with them. Okay. And at this point in time, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call this episode so I can recruit, uh, record the next one. It's like 7am. 7 7 I haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> Basically started... Uh, preparing this and making sure the game was installed and everything straight after the Age of Wonders Planetfall stream. So I'm getting a bit tired, but I'm going to power through this and get you this content. So thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, remember I will be streaming it later on today, 5pm British Summertime, twitch.tv slash Mordred Viking. You get to catch this live. I will be doing one more episode of this and then everything else is going to be from Twitch. So that's where that's going to be. I do have a Patreon. If you want to support the channel that way, you can check that out at patreon.com slash Viking, or you can find details in the description below. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing to this channel here. Hit that subscribe button so you get notifications when new episodes go live. I will be uploading this entire series to YouTube. Um, I also have a Discord, which you can find a link to in the description below. That is where the community hangs out. You should totally come hang with us. It would be lovely to see you. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I will catch you next time. Goodbye.